If you have your Bibles, can you get them out so we can take a look together what the Bible has to say? Today I'd like to talk about death starts eternity. And if you have your Bibles, let's go to Hebrews chapter 9 and we're going to verse 27. And Hebrews is in the New Testament towards the back of your Bible. We're going to the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 and it says, And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. So we see here that it's appointed for men to die one time. This is talking about physical death. Every person is going to die physically one time, but after this, the judgment. Every person will be judged by Jesus. Whether you have believed in Jesus as Savior or have not believed in Jesus as Savior, you will be judged. Now, there will be a group that will not die physically, and those will be the people alive at the rapture that are believers in Jesus as Savior. They will be raptured out and never die physically. But the general principle is that it is appointed for men to die one time, and then they will be judged. And we're going to take a look at what non-believers will be judged at. We're going over to the book of Revelation, chapter 20, and we're going to verse 11. So Revelation is the last book in your New Testament. We're going to the book of Revelation, chapter 20. We're starting in verse 11. And it says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were open. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. And taking a look at this, we see that in verse 11, the great white throne, that's the name of the location where non-believers will be judged. And him who sat on it, that him is Jesus. Jesus will be the judge. And verse 12 says, he saw the dead. That's the spiritually dead. The spiritually dead will be there at this judgment and their books will be open, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to the works. And why are they being judged according to the works? It's not to determine whether they go to the lake of fire or not. They will certainly go to the lake of fire because they never believed in Jesus as Savior. But they will be judged on their works to determine what kind of experience they'll have in eternity. Those that did a lot of bad works and a lot of terrible things will be judged worse than those that did not do such terrible works and terrible sins. So we can see that based on what they did in their life here on earth, will be the different degrees of punishment available for them. And let's continue on to see that. In verse 13 it says, The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found and written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So the reason why they were cast into the lake of fire is because they do not have everlasting life, which means they're not found written in the book of life at this time, and that they will be cast into the lake of fire. And determining what kind of works they live, their degree of punishment will be different. Now let's go over to see what believers will be at. In believers, let's go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we're going to verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. And Corinthians is written to only believers, so this is written to believers. And it says, Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus, and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And taking a look at this, it's talking about verses 16, about the inward man. The inward man is the spiritual man. The outward man is the physical man. And it says in verse 17 that what we're experiencing now is just a brief moment, but the things that we will have in eternity is much more important. And not looking at the things we can see, but the real world in the, is the spiritual world, which is stuff up in eternity. And it's going to be a great time for believers in Jesus. And taking a look at chapter 5, verse 1, it says, For we know that if our earthly house this tent is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now taking a look at this, it's talking about this physical tent, which is our physical body. Once it dies, our spirit will go up to eternity, and we will receive an eternal body at that time. 
Now, it's not that we, our spirit wants uh, no body. We want to be further clothed than this body and that we will receive a new body in eternity. And that's what is being talked about here. So really, eternity starts at physical death for the believer. Eternity is going to be a great experience. Now, eternity will also start at death physical death for the non-believer, but it's going to be an unfortunate time for them. But for the believer in Jesus, death starts eternity and it's going to be a wonderful thing. And taking a look at verse 5, now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Taking a look at that, we have the Holy Spirit given to us as a guarantee the moment we believe in Jesus as Savior. And we can find that truth in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. So if you have time on your own, please take a look at Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, and you'll see that truth there. And in verse 6, it says, For we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So taking a look at verses 6 through 8, it's talking about that while we are in this body, in our physical life, we are away from the Lord. And in verse 8, it says that once we die physically, that we are absent from the body because our spirit leaves our body, our physical body, and we're present with the Lord. That's a great time for the believer, and that's what we look forward to is to be with Jesus. And look at verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We don't need to see these things because we have the promise of the Bible and we can know that it's true based on the promise of God. And in verse 9, therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So taking a look at this in verse 9, believers should make it our aim to please God because we will have to face God at judgment in verse 10 and that will be Jesus at that throne. He will be the one judging us and we will be judged based on our works and that will determine our experience in eternity. The good works we do, we get we receive rewards for those things. Just like non-believers will be judged on their works not to determine whether they spend eternity with Jesus or not. They will not. But believers will also be judged not to determine whether to spend eternity with Jesus. They will for sure spend eternity with Jesus because they have everlasting life when they believed in Jesus as Savior. But the works that they did, they will receive rewards for those things and they'll have a greater experience in eternity. Let's go to one more place. Let's go to John chapter 3. We're going to the book of John, chapter 3, verse 1. It says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That is, which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Verse 10, Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify that what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. For if I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who has come down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven." Now, taking a look at this, Nicodemus is having a conversation with Jesus, and Jesus says, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. And to be born again, that happens when you believe in Jesus as Savior. And and Nicodemus was confused, and Jesus says, how do you not know these things? You're the teacher of Israel, in verse 10. And he's saying that you must be born again. And then in verse 11, Jesus is mentioning the Trinity here. He says, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. That's the Trinity. That's God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit are witnessing to the same thing. And then look at verse 12. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Did you know that the Bible tells us many things about the earth that we can check out to see that it's true? And if we do not believe the earthly things that Jesus has told us, then how are we going to believe the heavenly things? We should believe in both. 
what he told us about the earthly things and the heavenly things. But the earthly things, we can check out, verify that it's true. What the Bible says matches what the ha actually happens here on earth. And then we can make that faith that, yes, what he said about earth is true. So therefore, what he said about heaven is true. And taking a look at verse 13, the reason why is that no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. That's Jesus. Only Jesus has been in heaven and came down to tell us what heaven is like and how to get there. And he said to believe in him. And we're going to see that very soon in the next few verses. And in verse 14, it says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, look at verse 16. This is possibly the most famous verse in the Bible. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. For he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So taking a look at that, these verses are teaching that whoever, that means any person, believes in Jesus as Savior, believes in Jesus, the condition is to believe in Jesus as Savior, you will not perish. That means you'll never go to the lake of fire, but you'll have everlasting life. And if you have everlasting life, you'll spend eternity with Jesus. Well, have you believed in Jesus as Savior? Because once physical death happens, eternity starts. And if that happens, you certainly want to be with Jesus. And the only way is to believe in Jesus as Savior, and then you receive everlasting life, and you'll spend eternity with Jesus. So if you have not believed in Jesus as Savior, Please take a look at these verses and put your belief in Jesus as Savior. And the moment you do, you receive everlasting life. And if you have believed in Jesus as Savior, then work for the Lord. Please, God, so that you can have a great reward at the judgment seat of Christ. Well, thank you for joining me for this Bible study. I hope you've enjoyed it. Gather your friends and family around and join me for my next Bible study. Thank you.